In the words of Nicki Minaj, when I walk in, sit up straight. Because girl, going from a girl to a woman is hard work. Hey babes, and welcome back to my channel. I'm Shalithia Trine, and if you are new here, then welcome. I hope to have you as a new subscriber. But if you are a returning subscriber, then hey girl, hey, welcome back. Let's get into it. Ladies, we are going to talk about something today because going from this to this was no easy journey. <laughs> Let me just tell you. This is a topic that is close to my heart and it's called entering your womanhood era. Whether you're on the cusp of this journey or well into your path, there's something incredibly empowering about embracing this walk of womanhood and entering into such a soft life era. Walking into my womanhood era is one of the best things that could have ever happened to me. Now, don't get me wrong because the younger version of me was nothing to be played with, okay? She was a force to be reckoned with. But as a little girl, you have these big dreams and even bigger aspirations that you envision yourself accomplishing. For me, it was a lifestyle. I wanted to envision myself driving a nice car, having a big house, raising a family with a dog, going on spa dates and shopping sprees, all of these things, right? But with real life desire comes real life responsibility. And before you can enter into that era of you, you find yourself asking, can the glow up just be real already? And I'm here to tell you, of course it can. It's all in here. So today we're gonna talk about entering into your womanhood era and what that really looks like in real time. Because you know, you don't just magically wake up one day and become a woman. It doesn't work like that, at least not for the majority. And it's also not this magical portal that you just wake up one day and cross over into and say, I'm not a young adult anymore. I'm a full grown woman. No, it doesn't work that way you know it's something that you have to evolve into it's something that takes time that takes understanding and that is an evolution in itself entering into your womanhood era is a journey like no other and if I could sit down with my younger self and share with her all that I know now here's what I tell her femininity does not make you weak it is your superpower and a woman who embraces her femininity is a woman who knows her power. Because baby, let me tell you, you don't always have to have tough skin or a hardened heart or a strong mind. You can dwell in being dainty. Because can I tell you something? Can I really tell y'all something? Sometimes I love being a damsel in distress. Why? Because it makes me feel feminine. It makes me feel soft and fragile and womanlike. And rightfully so, because again, femininity isn't a weakness. It's your superpower. There is power in knowing when to accept help. There's also power in asking for it. We live in a society where appearing as this strong-willed woman is the new normal. And to be quite honest, the desire to be independent is at an all-time high. And that may be okay for you, but for me, <laughs> I find it more enticing to tap into every aspect of my feminine energy. I'm going to allow people to help me if I so choose. I'm going to sometimes sit pretty and smile because silence is golden. I'm going to be careful not to break a nail or pop a sweat if I don't have to. I'm going to be every bit of a woman because I am in fact a woman. Now, don't get me wrong. I joined the military. I can get in the trenches if I have to. But that's also the beauty of the womanhood era. It's versatile and you can be both a force and a princess. Which brings me to my next point. There is also power in self-compassion. This is a world that demands perfection. We are living in a time where standards are no longer the standard. Everything has to be perfect or near perfect. Learning to be kind to yourself, to embrace yourself, flaws and all, is revolutionary. And to me, the epitome of walking into your womanhood era. It's okay to not have all the answers. It's amazing to even have the mindset of continuous growth and being willing to learn. It's perfectly fine to be a work in progress. Let me read you guys a quote that I posted on my TikTok the other day. If you're not following me on TikTok or Instagram, please do. Sometimes I often post little uh, tidbits on there that I don't share um, across all of my platforms. So if you really wanna be in the know and support your girl, definitely go give me a follow. It's free and it really helps me to grow. So thank you in advance. But anywho, I posted this quote and I'm gonna share it here because 
I feel that it really resonates with this video. And it reads, a high value woman places morality over materialism. She values herself, the sanctity of her body, and is selective about the company that she keeps. She works harder on the things that people can't take away from her, like her character, her inner beauty, and her individuality. Those things are priceless. Mm. Let that sink in. She values herself and she works harder on the things that people can't take away from her. That makes me ask, what can you do for yourself that will make you happy? And the answer to that question is literally the definition of self-compassion. Giving that time back to you to do something for you that makes you happy. Simple actions like developing a skincare routine, changing your hairstyle, adding items to your wardrobe. These are things that are simple, but they can significantly boost your confidence. For me, it's staying on top of my upkeep. My maintenance appointments are literally my saving grace. I literally thrive off of getting my hair done, getting my nails and toes done, waxing, massages, shopping, all of the things that make me feel pampered because I work so hard, you guys. And anyone who knows me can tell you that the Capricorn in me allows me to neglect myself often. I will work so hard that I forget to eat literally work until my fingers are tingling from low blood sugar. And believe me, I know it's not healthy at all. But I've grown to work on that and realizing how to give back to myself has given me the ability to know that I've entered into my womanhood era. Because there's a line of realization and self-awareness that kind of needs to be crossed before you can even look to that era of you. So learn to be kind to yourself and really tap into those areas of life that makes you happy and that makes you feel like you're rewarding yourself because you can only be your best self when you're happy. Another one of the things that I had to figure out when entering into my womanhood era was finding ways to express myself and developing my personal style. We all have dreamt about finding a style that not only works for us, but makes us feel sexy, confident, and empowering. Developing a personal style that was authentic and sexy to me through my fashion, my makeup, my hair, boosted my confidence so much when walking into my womanhood era. I started paying attention to my wardrobe more. I didn't just throw on clothes for the sake of having something on. I dressed myself in clothes that made me feel good. Your style is an expression of your personality. Let it speak for you. I also started searching for hobbies that helped me express myself, such as dancing, skating, journaling, content creation. These are hobbies that helped me find my personal style and my personal way of expressing myself. They really helped me to carry myself with confidence because it was my own little style. Like I wasn't trying to be like anyone else this was just me and I always carry myself with poise and confidence and I'm not afraid to be assertive in my womanhood either. These are things that make me feel in tune with my emotions and help me to express them freely. And my friend, that is huge for shifting you into your womanhood era. Let's talk about boundaries because if I could do life all over again, there are some times where I for sure could have set some much needed boundaries. The importance of setting boundaries, not only for others, but for yourself, can never be overstated. Boundaries are the ultimate form of self-respect and even self-care. They kind of put into perspective some of the things that you are and are not comfortable with and shows how you want to be treated by others. Have you ever heard that quote that's like, when you set boundaries, you take back the power from those who have been taking it from you all along? Like, hello, having access to my energy here is a privilege. Let's not get it twisted. But it's okay to detached sometimes. I often forget that no is a whole sentence out here and it's so liberating to say like no, 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 no. <laughs> it's a whole sentence and sometimes you just have to use it. You have to become used to using the word no. That's it. I realized that I used to tolerate a lot because I was afraid to lose people. But baby, now I established those boundaries because honestly, I just don't want to lose myself. And I know that by honoring those boundaries that I've set for myself, I'm also honoring myself. You can be both a good person with a kind heart and still say no. Because you set boundaries to respect you, yourself, not to offend others. But I mean, if the shoe fits. Because can I tell you the real gag? Boundaries will always seem offensive 
to the ones that planned on violating you from the very beginning. Woo! Cutting off people who consistently disrespect you and the boundaries that you've set for yourself is the greatest act of self-love that you could ever give yourself. And once you establish them, you've not only entered into your womanhood era, girl, you sprinted there. And I'm so proud of you. Setting those boundaries brings me to my next point being mindful of the company that you keep. As certain things in your life change, your environment will too. And it's very important to build a community that matches the same trajectory that your life is on. If I could go back, I would tell my younger self to surround herself with people that are supportive and uplifting because that is what makes the journey into your womanhood era so much more abundant. Like, listen, there's strength in solidarity. And surrounding myself with people that I have things in common with, that uplift me, that motivate me, really is my happy place because I feel like I found my little tribe of people. You know, those people that you relate to. But not only that, surrounding yourself with those people that inspire you to be more, that inspires you to be better than your current self is another key point into entering into your womanhood era because you're now setting the bar to where you want to see yourself and surrounding yourself with like-minded people. The younger me would not be interested in going out for coffee or lunch dates with friends. I was so introverted that I I wouldn't dare think about going out and networking with other people. Like, are you crazy? But as you grow older, I realize that it's so needed. And you have to find your tribe of people because there is this immense power in women supporting other women. You guys see this quote that I have right here? in my background, it's probably hard for you to see. And if you're an OG subscriber, then you've seen this quote back here years ago. Like you've seen it plenty of times before in my older videos. But if I'm going to read it to you because you guys probably can't see it, but it said behind every successful woman is more successful women. And it's so true. I live by it because those successful women behind you are the women that you are paving the way for. And you know, you're behind someone else who's paving the way for you. You're pulling those people, those women along with you because someone else pulled you along with them on their journey. Successful women who are grateful for you to be bringing them along in your journey into womanhood or wherever your journey takes you. You're just growing together and it's a beautiful thing to see. I remember speaking about this in my last video, the leveling up your mental in 2024. One of the tips that I shared with you guys is realizing that you can't get there alone and you need your tribe of people to push you because they sometimes bring a different perspective. But if you haven't checked out that video, go check out that video after this one and you'll see what I'm talking about. But it's very important to remember both. I say all that to say entering into your womanhood era does allow you to connect with other women and empower each other and learn from each other and grow with each other. Now, I wouldn't be able to talk about entering into my womanhood era without addressing the woman's intuition. Whew, the power of a woman's intuition is something serious. A woman's intuition is like a compass that lives inside of you and is guiding you to go in the right direction. And if you were to somehow stray away from that right direction, you wouldn't have any choice but to go back to that right direction because it's so loud, it's so powerful, it's a gut feeling. And trusting it can lead to making decisions that are truly aligned with you. Imagine being at a crossroad and your heart is telling you to go left, but your gut is telling you to go right. So you decide to go with your heart because your heart is like, oh, it's my heart. You gotta go with your heart, but you end up experiencing this very rough heartbreak. And you realize that going right was the way you should have went. And of course, this is a very generic example of how a woman's intuition works, but you get the point. Trusting your intuition is like building muscle. The more you use it, the stronger it gets. And when I realized that I had the ability to tap into my woman's intuition, that's when I also realized that I had successfully journeyed off into my womanhood era because now I'm able to distinguish exactly what I'm feeling. I can distinguish my mind, body, and soul from my gut. And trust me when I say 
the gut always wins. Entering into your womanhood era brings a level of confidence that you wouldn't have as a younger girl. The younger me didn't have confident body language. This version of me does. And I stand tall with my shoulders back and my head held high and it instantly makes me feel more powerful and sexy. There's something so powerful about a woman that gracefully captures the attention of all of those around her because she's so confident. I'm talking head, heels, and standards high. In the words of Nicki Minaj, when I walk in, sit up straight. All right, guys, that wraps up today's video. I hope these gems that I dropped for you guys today inspire you to embrace your womanhood era with open arms. Entering your womanhood era is about creating a life filled with fulfillment on your own terms. It's never too late to walk into this era, and every step that you take forward is another step towards the life that you truly deserve. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. It really helps to support my channel and help me grow. Please remember to keep embracing your powerful womanhood era. Until next time, my friends, take care. And as always, be yourself, be you, be beautiful, and be untamed. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye. Yeah.